This episode is brought to you by our friends at Brooks Blooms, your all-in-one landscaping solution. Brooks Blooms three-step landscaping experience offers a seamless journey from design to construction and ongoing care, ensuring your outdoor space thrives year-round. Visit brooksblooms.com today to embark on your landscaping journey where every step is a step towards a vibrant and beautiful outdoor entertaining space. G'day everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Ads and Dunks podcast, exclusively brought to you by the Oz American Aces. It's Dunks here. Um, actually, we, we don't really introduce ourselves as Ads and Dunks, do we, Adzy? I've got Ads on the line, obviously my best mate in Melbourne. No, we don't. Thanks again for having me. It's uh, nice to be back on the on the show. Um, but no, we actually don't. We, we don't usually do that, but um, I like our little intros. I like how we... Uh, we swap it every week. I like I like to think our fans out there know that we're actually rotating it every week and giving each other a go at it. And you know what? Maybe put a poll up, see who intros better. Who intro? I reckon most people would say you because you know you really get right into it, and I'm more of a streamlined kind of guy. You know, you're a bit out there. Yeah, well, I think there should be a petition for you to really, really get into it and show a bit of uh, your external, <laughs> your internal character that we may not be seeing right now because I have seen it. Seen it a couple times when you've been on the beers. I've seen it a couple times when you've when you've seen seen some of your horses win down the straight. So maybe get up and about for the podcast. Oh, I get up and about for it. It's just sometimes you know when you're doing introductions, I, I lose track of what I might be saying or you know just having a bit of fun. So for me, it's more about the concentration and nailing those intros. Well, mate, lucky we don't do a live uh, live podcast. Although that would be pretty sick doing a live podcast. I'd love to do that. I honestly thought about this today after we spoke on the phone. I was like, why don't we, like, not many people out there go live on their podcast. Like, so, for example, if we were live right now and then we could see, like, live comments and stuff pop up, that would be pretty cool. And then we can dance, you know, we're talking and then all of a sudden something pops up that you like. You're like, oh, so-and-so said this. Like, what do you think? Let's do it, mate. I can play my 2K here because, as we all know, my, um, my screen's here and I can play a bit of 2K whilst talking a bit of shit with you. And other people that, that could get involved. But uh, before we get into it tonight, we've got a um, big announcement. We're giving away two tickets. So thanks to our friends at Brooks Blooms. Brooke has uh, kindly thrown out there that uh, the veranda, there's two tickets to the veranda to our sellout game or my sellout game this Thursday night against the Pies. So we're going to do a giveaway. All you've got to do is share the pod, tag us in. So myself adds Oz American Aces and Brooks Blooms. By midnight tomorrow night, well, sorry, it's Tuesday right now for us, so midnight on Wednesday night, and then the winner will be announced 11 a.m. Thursday. So Instagram, share the pod, tag us in before midnight, and then the winner will be announced on Thursday at 11 a.m. So make sure you get out there and uh, get around us because it's two tickets to give away. Obviously, it's going to be someone in Brisbane because uh, there's a lot of people that probably won't be able to make it from Melbourne or wherever they come from, but... We're giving away two tickets thanks to our friends at Brooks Blooms. Yeah, Brooke, you're a star. That is going to be a blockbuster of a game, so you don't want to miss out, as you just said. Uh, make sure you, uh, you do everything Josh you just said because what a game to see. I mean, we'll touch on the game a bit later. I cannot wait to um, to uh, to preview that one. But you actually went to the veranda launch on the Saturday, didn't you? I did. I did Saturday night. It was, uh, it was pretty cool. Brooke goes all out as always and um, made it a pretty special showing. She had the fireworks on the Gabba and I've seen that. everything was going off. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So there was a lot of people there. A couple of boys from the club went. Lockie was there um, with his partner, Jules, Zach Bailey, Cam Rayner and all her staff and all their friends as well. So it was a pretty special opening for her and, and the team and, um, yeah, awesome to see on the other side of the fence. I was a little bit jealous. I was in uh, in cold old Ballarat. I think it was a nice, cool six degrees preparing for my game on the Sunday. Um, whilst I was seeing uh, you put up socials and Brooke put up some socials and our boy Herb put up some socials of the fireworks happening at the Gabba whilst here I was cuddled up into bed because I was absolutely freezing. But um, it ended up being a really good weekend for both of us. But um, before we talk footy, how was your week anyway? What did you get up to? Um, obviously, you didn't play. No doubt you would have uh, watched a bit of footy and done a bit of training and whatnot. But outside of that, what did you get up to? Not a lot, mate, to be honest. Tipper wasn't here and um, the girls had a – we can talk about netball. They had a um, preseason tournament in Sydney. So I think it's called the Team Girls Cup. And uh, so they were away for five nights. So I was actually here with the two dogs. Obviously, I had Archie for quite some time. but got Herbie, who's a full-time – job at the moment for me 
uh, looking after him. So I didn't do it. I didn't do much else other than look after those two, clean up the house, cook some food, just hang out. Really. What about you? Sounds like the sounds like the life, mate. Sounds like fun. What you need to do is get into a bit of NBA two K and start playing with him. Maybe we can stream as well. Well, I'm not a gamer, mate. You know that I'm not a gamer. I know that. I know that. But you can change. You know, what, mate. You can change. Just do it. I did change. I did change a little bit during COVID with Fortnite and stuff. But 2K, no good. <laughs> uh, my week. My week was uh, was good. Other than obviously playing footy, we um we had the obviously the Sunday early game. So I've seen a lot of the footy. There's not really much you can do uh, on the weekend when. Um, you know, when you're playing on the Sunday, but I was able to watch a bit of footy, which was good. Um, you know, I uh, I haven't I didn't re- haven't watched the first two rounds. Um, so round zero, what's it called again? Round zero was it round zero? Yeah, round yep. zero, round one. So I was able to watch a little bit on um, on the weekend, which was nice. But other than that, I you know, mate, watched a bit of the races on Saturday. Watched a couple of the gun horses run around. Um, didn't do too much. The weather's been nice here, which is which is good because Melbourne's really hanging on to the. The uh, the heat in the sun at the moment. I feel like it's really starting to change at the moment, and um, you know, just trying to uh, lap up all the sun that we can get. But other than that, mate, did not do much other than play. Well, it's interesting you talk about weather because up here the last few days it has been just raining consistently. Like the whole backyard starting to be like a bit of a swamp again. It's crazy. I did see that. I seen that. Uh, I swear Brisbane goes through s- stages where. Like it'll just be sunny and beautiful for for a long time, and then it'll just have a week's worth of just torrential rain, and it'd be absolutely horrendous. Yeah, it, it's nuts. It's it's probably a good thing for the garden. Actually, that's one thing I didn't talk about that I did last week was I made basil pesto from all the basil that Brooke put in my garden. Oh, there's there's heaps of it. So I went to the shops and got this. Well, I had this recipe on the um, thermo mix that I got, and um, it was like uh, I think it was a walnut. Or it might have been a macadamia pesto, basil pesto. So I did that and made like heaps of jars and put it all in the fridge. And I'm going to give a few away to some friends. So that was something I did actually. Oh, you would have nailed that. Actually, something I did as as well is you can't see it from the um from the camera, but my uh, my keyboard's over there. So I know last oh, week yeah. off off air I was playing a bit of keyboard and uh, I've spent probably two hours every day practicing. So self taught, trying to teach myself how to play keyboard and um. It's quite funny because uh, I feel like I'm good, but then I listen back to myself and I absolutely suck. So, uh, <laughs> so I'm trying. Sometimes I get on the FaceTime with Kimmy and Georgie, and I'm trying to learn a couple songs for Georgie um, to play for her. But yeah, that's actually what I did in the last uh, week. Played a bit of keyboard. You know what? I might post that video that you sent me that was just hilarious. I showed you said show tip of this. What was it? What song was it? <laughs> See. That is why I tell you what I tell you what we need to bring back is you and your celebrity cluelessness because you got no idea. The song was "My Heart Will Go On" from Titanic. Everyone knows that song. Granted, probably didn't sound like that. Didn't play that well, but I tried and I played the four minute song and I sent it to Josh and Tipper, yeah. and apparently they said it was the funniest thing. Could have been your bloom of the week, mate. Oh, I should have actually mentioned that. That would have been hilarious. And I can send the I can send the whole clip to Brado and get him to clip it up for us. No, nah, hang on. I'll do a proper one. I'll do my best that I can, and then I'll send it through to you. And then yeah, we'll see whether we post it or not because uh, that ain't getting any, that's not getting anywhere at the moment. Um, but we'll move on. <laughs> we'll move on from that because uh, that is a work in progress. Footy. What was your? There's been a couple big stories throughout the um the weekend. Um, I love bringing up. I guess controversial stuff because I know you're the controversial one out of the both of us. That's uh, all we're here to on, do, mate. On the um, on the Thursday night was it the Yeston and Sydney game? Might have been the yep. Friday. Uh, there was there was an incident with Peter Wright. Uh, I just want to know what your thoughts are on that. Well, I have seen that he's got four weeks uh, minutes ago. So yeah, my thoughts my thoughts on that are. I feel like if you're in that position now, you just have to go for the ball. You can't protect yourself. So he's obviously gone to protect himself at the last second, collected Cunningham. He's knocked out. So that it probably makes sense that he's got a, a four-week ban. I've seen a lot of things. I saw actually Wayne Carey's podcast that he's been doing and um, him saying that you know if he gets more than a, a week or if he gets rubbed out at all, it, the game's cooked. But 
if that's all we're standing for, then that's the rule. And so that's how it is. Like that, it, to me, it makes sense. But I kind of wish that it wasn't like that, but it is these days. And that's that's how the game is now. And we just got to deal with it. Yeah, I, uh, I couldn't agree more with you. I think the safety and the priority of the... I guess the player that's involved um, that ends up getting hurt is yeah should be the priority, and that's clearly what we've yeah. been that's clearly what we've been trying to stamp out for a few years now. So yeah, I think um, yeah I think when the incident happened, it was like oh yeah that's um that's not a good one, and yeah there was a couple of um you know a couple of little incidents in that game. It was a feisty game, mm. the Essendon Sydney game. They came with a with a bit of a um I. A, a, I don't know, a spice to their game and clearly wanted to bring the physical side. And um, Sydney obviously showed that they were way too good. Well, not way too good, but mm. clearly too good in the end and, and one of the benchmark teams. But, yeah, that was, um, you know, that was a pretty think, crazy moment. Yeah, I think on that, if he if he continues to run through, like taking a chest, like his hands are out in front, if he runs through the, the that contest and Cunningham still gets knocked out, but the ball, like it, he's still watching the ball, I think that that's play on. Like it's literally just the turn of the body. That's all it is, yeah. because it looks like he's going to try and bump him. So if the, if it's just a straight on contest, maybe it might hurt him a bit more. But if you don't want to get rubbed out, I think that's what you got to do. Yeah, and I think the eyes as well. I don't. I think the eyes kind of darted a little yeah. bit towards Cunningham. And yeah. obviously, when you watch that back, you know that as soon as that obviously you see that in slow mo, then that's probably going to be another um, issue that you're going to have to deal with. So yeah, obviously thoughts are always with the. With the player that ends up getting hurt, and um, we we actually had Ed Richards similar kind of incident in our game where there was just two boys going at the ball as hard as they can, and um, unfortunately he came off, you know, not well, and obviously had to get subbed out. So you're right, I, I couldn't agree more with you. I think um, if that's the path that we're going down, the players obviously need to know that, and um, that little, you know, the way that you described that, that was good. Well done. Maybe you need to stand up you and like do a that? demo. Yeah, maybe we need to make a YouTube channel where you can um, <laughs> adjust adjust to the current rules nowadays and, and see how players can adjust to it. But yeah, that was uh, that was an interesting one. Anything catch your eye um, footy wise on the weekend? Oh well, from that game, I just wanted to bring this up because we've both played with this guy. Did you see Big Travi Cloak in the oh, in the scuffles? Yeah. I did. <laughs> we should talk about that because that did. was pretty. Uh, it was unreal. I loved seeing him in there, like ripping his boys out. Like get out, boys! Well, he still looks so big. Yeah, I think like he didn't touch any Sydney player. He was no. He was um just ripping his boys out, which was good. Like I thought that was good. I thought it was awesome to see, but <laughs> I, I think I think they've uh I actually think they've yeah, got him in trouble for it. I think I think he's been issued a warning for it, but I I remember watching it and I had to second look. I was like, "Hang on a minute. Is that Travis Cloak? <laughs> What's he doing?" And then obviously he sorted it out. But no, I didn't I didn't, I actually didn't mind it. Um Actually, what about the uh, the streaker in the Adelaide Geelong game? Oh yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't really. I don't like it. But I kind of liked how the boys helped the security guards get. That's him what in the end. That's where I was. That's what I was getting to. If you're so the first player that he kind of was within striking distance who actually realised was Matty Crouch, and I yeah. felt like Crouch he committed to it, like kind of tripped him up, and then was like, "Oh, the security guards will take care of it." But then he somehow got away again. And I love the fact mm. – I loved it to the fact to the point where I was actually going to make it the bloom of the week, Ben Keyes' um, – he's semi-tackle on uh, on the streaker. But I, I would love to think that if you're in that situation or I was in that situation, you would absolutely nail the tackle on that bloke because that just <laughs> – it's just frustrating, mate. It's just like – I don't know why these people do it. Like, seriously. Save your money, man. Like, friggin' – what the heck are you doing? I agree. And I've seen some – I've seen some big hits on some of those guys. So, if you are uh, – if you don't want to get, well, you might want to get out there. But if you don't want to get hit, well, don't go out there because some boys yeah, might you, line you up. Do you remember, remember the Andrew Simons run when, yeah, um, when he? I think it was a big hip and shoulder, and um, yeah, absolutely nailed him. Andrew Simons, what a legend, mate! What an absolute legend. Ra- random question, but him and uh, Mark Hussey, my two favorite cricketers of all time. Who's your favorite cricketer of all time? Um, all time. Oh, it's hard to go past Ricky Ponting or Matty Hayden. Matty Hayden was one. Adam Gilchrist. I remember watching Gilly break that record that day. That was pretty cool. The quickest century. That was unbelievable. I remember sitting in our at the farm, you know, our house at the in, in Yarra, my, my, where mum and dad still are now. 
was yep. sitting in that same lounge room, Panda's where he's got his recliner, and uh, we're all sitting there watching Gilly just go to town. It was unbelievable. I love cricket, mate. Love cricket. Me too, mate. I love playing cricket. But we'll move on from cricket. We're getting a little bit lost with our cricket. Um, I might as well talk about my game. I mean, you didn't play, so I guess we'll just chat about our, my game and and uh, what a great weekend it was for the Western Bulldogs Footy Club, where it was the first round mm. for the VFL as well. So um, eight eight points across the board. We had a really good win in the VFL, and um, there's been uh, a million questions about Jack McRae, who um, absolutely dominated in the VFL, which was just funny to watch. When you watch a player who is clearly a class above, um, yeah, it's quite funny. He dominated in the VFL. But our, our AFL boys, were, um, well, the game itself was uh, very pleasing, very very pumped that we were able to play the way that we s- spoke about and, and the way that we've wanted to play, you know, from the get-go, really. We, I felt like we, um, you know, we, we prepared really well into this game and we looked at areas that we needed to improve on clearly, but we, we, we honed in on the areas that we know that we're good at and what we've done pretty much all preseason. And then in the two community games where we played against Hawthorne, we were able to, um, you know, be strong in the contest and and really build off the back of our contest work and I felt like we did that from the from the get go against Gold Coast. We know that um, you know they're a very good contested ball side and you know they've got a class midfield. That's probably where it's led with Raul and Anderson and and Miller and even Flanders through there. And um, the fact that we were able to start well and score heavily in the first quarter and then probably what was most pleasing the fact that. After that, they did come at us in periods. And, um, you know, last week against Melbourne, we let ourselves down a little bit where we obviously played good in patches, but then they ultimately ran away with it. Um, Gold Coast were really coming at us, but the fact that we were able to, I guess, rectify some moments and then, you know, kick a goal, but then be able to pile on a couple more goals, that was probably the most pleasing thing. So super pumped that the boys were able to get the job done. Yeah, did you find you played against your favourite player, like you said last week? Uh, how'd you go nullifying his impact? I don't think he had the anywhere near the kind of game that he had the week before or the week before that. Firstly, we didn't play against the Brisbane Lions. If you're saying I'm playing against my favourite player, because <laughs> uh, Lockie Neal's my favourite. No, you're my favourite. Um, <laughs> no, nah, obviously, rarely was a uh, you know he's we've spoken about. Well, I've spoken about how. I love watching him and how good of a season he's already had. His first two games have been incredible. Um, we clearly had a plan to, um, you know, to try and uh, com- combat him at stoppage and, and Libba had that job and um, felt like, you know, Libba did an unbelievable job. He's such a um, team first mentality player who not only wins his own footy, but when he has a task, which he did against Rowley, he, you know, does a great job at it, which he did. So I felt like that really helped us clearly because he's there – number one, the clearance player. And, um, you know, if we were able to stop him, I felt like, well, felt and we did that we were able to um, then get on top in there. And um, as I've said historically on our potty and even just in general interviews, uh, a lot of our games where, where we've won or lost is dictated by how our midfield goes. And, um, yeah, felt like it was a really, really good performance by the boys. I felt like Sando obviously, um, you know, got a little bit more exposure, played um, – you know, obviously the full game, but had a really big big impact. Um, I loved Caleb Daniels' game where he came in and he's kind of missed the fix it for us who plays a bit of everywhere. You obviously know um, the quality player that he is, but, you know, he kind of played it everywhere for us and um, just played a tremendous game for us. So, yeah, extremely pumped that um, we were able to do that. Yeah, no, I, was, I didn't get to see all of it, but looked like it would have been a pretty impressive performance by you boys down in Ballarat. Which we always used to, or I used to love going down there. But everyone loves going down there. I know at the doggies. So um, yeah, like you said, it might might have been a little bit chilly, but uh, yeah, good to get the win. Hey, I, I want to ask you just about Nader um, because I know yeah. a lot of people want to know about him. Mm-hmm. How is he? How's he been around the club? Still that vibrant guy that we know, or um, has he been a bit disappointed in missing out? Like, how's he been? No, he's been great. Been great. You would not even know that you know he hasn't obviously been playing in the ones he's um he's approach and his mentality has been yeah incredible he's um you know clearly went out there and played in in a vfl game which i can't imagine he's played too many vfl games and i think his performance speaks volumes of where his head's at and um you know just how he knows it's kind of bigger than you know, it's not just about Nader and obviously the big picture is the team and, um, you know, he's going to clearly come in and when he comes in, he's going to be the same 
you know, Jacko McRae that we've known for 12 to 13 years, the one that is tough and, you know, just the gun of the competition. And, you know, when he comes in, he's going to be that same player. So um, the fact that he's, you know, play, uh, went back and played at VFL level and, and his mentality didn't change, um, his leadership stayed the same, he, he really helped out our younger guys. Um, Riley Garcia had a really good... Really, really good game in the VFL, and, and Nader helped him out enormously. He helped out a lot of the VFL mids, who obviously would be pinching themselves that they're playing with a guy like Jacko McRae. So, um, you know, it's great to see uh, the way he is around the boys, and, and still, you know, um, getting up and about for the boys winning. And um, yes, yeah, just being a great team man. So, um, as I said, no doubt he'll be uh, in sooner rather than later when he is. Can't wait to see what he produces because he's going to have a hunger and, and a desire to, um, yeah, perform well. Is that a chance to happen this week, you reckon? Honestly, mate, I couldn't tell you. I, I could not tell you. Can't give us an inside scoop. I don't sit in the match committee meetings, mate. Um, <laughs> I don't talk that. All I know is that if he plays, he's going to be an, a great contributor for us and he'll play great. I know he will because he's ready to rock and roll. So we'll see. I can let you know come – when does the team get announced? Friday. So you would have already played your game by then. Speaking of your game, we may as well preview your game. A, uh, All right, let's do it. A, Absolute blockbuster of a, of a game, um, Brisbane v Collingwood. And as you said earlier, we've got that giveaway, so make sure you've listened earlier to the potty. Uh, both teams are winless, which is pretty crazy to think, considering you're both with the um, the two best teams last year. And you know, on paper, you know, people would have said that you're probably both undefeated going into this game. So. Yeah, just talk us how you're feeling. You, you obviously would have watched them last week. You know that there's a lot of pressure on them. There's a bit of pressure on you guys as well. Um, you know, yeah. you guys don't want to. You, yeah. don't, you don't want to go zero and three. Now Colin would go zero and four. So, mate, let us know how you're feeling. Uh, firstly, I think the thing that sort of it doesn't frustrate you, but it's sort of just it, I don't know blows my mind to think that you know I saw something like um, I think one of the commentators or one of the media personalities out there saying that Collingwood can't win the flag from here. Like they're 0-3, they can't Rubbish. win the flag. Like that's just – that stuff blows me away. Like uh, you could go – they could go on and win every game for the rest of the year and win the flag. Like it just mm. – writing people off at this time of year is just outrageous in my opinion. So mm. I, I, that's for just one thing I wanted to say before I get into it. But, yeah, you're right. It's a, um, it's a big game for both of us. Obviously, we haven't well, – neither of us have found – the form that we'd like. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be a cracking contest. I feel both are going to be really hungry for the contest and um, want to hunt the ball and, and win the ball and get it going forward because ultimately that's how you kick goals. But for us, it's just about doing the basics well. And, um, you know, we've seen glimpses of it over the past couple of weeks. Um, and, yeah, just ha- probably haven't seen that four-quarter performance that we've been after so that's really going to be a focus for us heading into the game and um, hopefully we can see those consistent behaviors that are going to help us win each contest and then you know get the ball forward and kick goals so it sounds pretty simple but that's how we're we're approaching it this week is very simple you know narrow focus and trying to get that win yeah do do you use any uh extra motivation for the obviously grand final loss that you had you know no doubt you would have, you guys would have at the start of the fixture being announced, penciled in the game that you play against Collingwood, which we all know every year it's the Easter Easter weekend. Um, is there a little mm. bit of extra motivation for you guys to, you know, not a, not only kickstart your um, 2024 campaign, but to, you know, beat the team that ended up beating you in the in the grand final last year? Yeah, for sure. I think Collingwood Brisbane have always had that kind of competitive rivalry, you could call it throughout the years and it's just getting bigger and bigger now because of the games that we've played against each other, whether it's been mm. top of the table or second v third or third v fourth or whatever it might be. And now obviously the grand final. So there is a little bit of extra motivation there for us, I feel. Um losing to them on, you know, the biggest day ever in you know, some some people's careers. So um yeah, losing that game's definitely gonna hopefully hold us in good stead heading into it because I feel, you know, that the hurt that you feel after that game's just yeah, it's nearly the worst day of your life or probably is the worst day of your life. So, um, yeah, hopefully we can be on the other side of that this Thursday night. Yeah, well, I can't, I can't wait to watch. Is um, Where do you – so I personally believe, obviously, they're going to come and, you know, come with a hunger and a want and clearly going to be mm. strong around the contest, which is, you know, 
here in Melbourne, you, you read the paper, and as you said, it's absolutely blows my mind that there's there's commentators out there right and calling it off when we know how good their footy is and still right up there as the best team in the competition. But one of the areas that they've been questioned in early by the uh, the media is the contest side. Do you firstly fully expect them to come and I guess try and over exaggerate the contest and just really want to win the ball? And secondly. How are you going to, I guess, rectify that? Um, you know, is there – will you guys change anything that you've been doing because you obviously haven't won any games or will there be a clear plan or whatever it may be? What's your thoughts on that? Uh, I do think they're going to come with a an over-exaggeration approach of winning the contest for sure, yeah, because that's where they're being challenged and that's what they'll mm. all be talking about. So, And we're probably similar, to be honest. Like, we haven't won the contest the last two weeks. Carlton beat us up and so did Freo. So – that's going to be a, a big battle is that, you know, the centre bounce, the stoppages around the ground, but it's contested ball as a whole, not just midfielders. It's contested ball around the ground, you know, contests, wins, v, you know, mm. backs on forwards or forwards on backs. It's not just mm. – when you look at the contested ball number, I feel everyone can get stuck into thinking it's just the mids, but it's not. It might be majority midfielders, but a lot of the time it's a contest as well. So – for me, it's good. it's the contested ball number at the end of the night. I feel like whoever's in the green for that will have won the game because they, they would have won more contests on the night, and it's going to be uh, it's going to go a long way to that team scoring. So, in my opinion, that's that's what I think, and I feel like as a group, that's what we'll be looking to to bring on Thursday night. Couldn't agree more with you, mate. I think you nailed that, and I also feel like both teams will be um, a little bit more. I guess attacking with the way they want to move the footy because that's another area where I think um, you know both users probably want to get better at. I mean, Collingwood obviously when they get the ball free flowing, similar to you guys, they're, you know they're a very very hard team to stop. So cannot wait to watch. As we said earlier, make sure you listen to the potty earlier because there's two free tickets that we're going to be giving away to this absolute ripper of a game. I'll I'll be watching at home on TV, so I can't wait. Um, round ahead, I wanted to. I wanted to quickly touch on – I love talking about milestone players who have been around for a long time and like got to give a bit of love to Travis Boak. I, um, he played his 350th on the weekend, which I can't even – I don't even know how many players have played 350. No doubt Brad will say it in my head at some point, but I reckon there's about 20 maybe. The fact that he's played 350 and had the career that he's had, um, he's someone uh, I've always looked up to because of the way that he prepares and – performs week in, week out, and he still performs at a high level and looks after his body really well and hasn't really lo- lost much of his speed and his power. So um, firstly, a bit of love from the Ads and Dunks podcast for Bokey. Hopefully he watches. Um, that'd be great. But this week as well, Tom Hawkins, 350th and the 24th player to play um, his 350th, which I want to give a bit of love to that as well because, again, he's – mate, he's – when he hit the age of 30, he just got better, better, better and better. And – you know, been an All-Australian player multiple times in his 30s, um, has won a premiership in his 30s, uh, probably won a Coleman medal, I'm not too sure, but he's just had an incredible career and it's been a joy to play against, sometimes a bit of a pain in the ass because he's kicked the bag on us and that's just been frustrating, but um, absolute superstar of the competition and as I said, I, I want the ads and dunks boys to give those two a bit of love. Yeah, I completely agree with you, mate. Bokey's been one that I've looked up to as well. You know, getting saunas and all that kind of stuff has been – probably inspiration from him. So it's an incredible milestone for both of those guys. And we obviously Trav's played his last week, but wish uh, the Tomahawk all the best in his 350th on Easter Monday, I think it is, isn't it? Remember all those Easter Monday clashes that used to be like is, oh. big blockbusters? Unbelievable you know what? games. It still is. I mean, you know, granted Hawthorne haven't kind of been at that level there have been at when they were playing those games, but it's still a massive build up here and one of the games on the calendars yep. that we all look forward to. Um, that kind of leads me into something that I want to do um, weekly for us. I want you and I to do it weekly. It doesn't have to be long. I just want to, you come up with a player and I'll come up with a player where we talk about a player and we show them a bit of love. It could be an absolute superstar of the game or could be someone that no one's talking about where you feel like they should be spoken about because of maybe how they're playing, what they've been doing, their performances. So it's something that I want us to do. I want it to. Uh, I want to give a bit of love to some players. I'll start. I'll start whilst you think right now because I know I've just put you on the spot. Um, <laughs> I'm going to start with 
a big name player. Well, I think he's a big name player. He's clearly big in Sydney. And I'm going to start with Isaac Heaney. And the reason why I'm going to start with yeah. Isaac Heaney is because he's clearly played, you know, he's probably the best player in the competition at the moment for what he's been able to do around the ball and up forward. And the fact that you can play forward and I guess easy to come in and, you know, have an impact here and there when you're, I guess, just a occasional center bounce player, midfield player. But the fact that he, he spent majority of his preseason from all reports playing midfield and he's come in and literally ripped up every single game to the point where he's probably got nine from nine Brownlow votes. Um, yeah, I think it's incredible and it's a joy to watch. I love watching him play. He's, t- he's turning into one of my favorite players to watch, the, his ability to win around the ball and then go forward and impact still the same way that he's done for six, seven years. It's been um, It's been a joy to watch. So he's the player that I'm giving a bit of love to this week. Uh, that's a good shout. And while uh, while you've been talking, I've been thinking. And uh, mine is a St. Kilda player, Marcus Windhager. Oh, I yes. Feel like his, game, his game last week and or the first couple of weeks have been underrated. Like a lot of people talk about the Steels, you know, the Royal Marshals, the, the Kings. Like they talk about all those players, but they don't talk about this bloke. This guy's a... He's been known to be a tagger, and I reckon he's been released off the shackles a little bit, and he's mm-hmm. he's playing really good footy. So he would be mine right now, mate. I'm gonna. That is huge. I I watched that Saturday, uh, that Thursday, Friday night game, whatever day it was, and he really stood out to me. His his power and explosiveness around the ball. I had to be like, oh wow, actually, you know, because as you as you said, he's been a tagger from what we've seen. Mm. Didn't realize he had that you know, in his game. And to see that was, yeah, unreal. I like it, mate. And for, for our fans that are listening, send through yours. Send through yours on on any of our social channels and um, let us know what you think because we'll read a couple out because I, I like giving a bit of love to um, to some of our players. But, yeah, I um, I think it's a good one from you this week. Well done, mate. Oh, thanks, mate. Likewise, I do think Isaac Haney has been dominating too. So it's another good one to talk about. Uh, moving on, anything else from footy before we move on? Uh, no, nah, I'm just one other thing. I'm just really looking forward to the Port Adelaide Melbourne game. I'm really, really keen to see two really good, informed teams. I feel like Melbourne playing Adelaide really well. Um, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to watching that game. Oh, we actually we haven't even talked about your game yet, actually. <laughs> Sunday, is oh, it Sunday yeah. against the Eagles. <laughs> Yes, we're playing the Eagles. That's right. We're playing at one o'clock. One o'clock at Marvel. Well, give First us a little, game at Marvel. Give us a little wrap up of uh, how you're feeling <laughs> for that and taking your form from Ballarat. It's going to be a uh, hostile environment for the Eagles, some would say. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm interested to see if they open the roof for this game because it's one o'clock game and there's no scheduled ra- uh, well rain. There's no rain, so I think the roof's going to be open. Which usually you know what you're going to get at Marvel, so um, might have a bit of um, might have a bit of conditions, but. Uh, Regardless, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, you know, I felt like we we kickstarted our season this previous Sunday, and yeah, it's just another good opportunity for us to um, play the way we want to play. We know that uh, you know the Eagles, um, albeit they haven't won their first two games, they've had some really good periods in the game, like played some really impressive footy. And um, as I said, I watched a lot of footy this weekend, and I watched um, you know a bit of their game and watched their last quarter in particular, and they were still really. Um, you know, balls were taking the the game on and and really taking it up to the Giants and um, yeah, was was really impressed with some of their players. So fully expecting them to come over here and and approach us like that. And um, you know, it wasn't too long ago where they where they beat us in round twenty three last year to ultimately you know stop us from making the finals, which was a very disappointing day for us. So um, we know what they're capable of and really looking forward to um yeah, looking forward to the game and, and being our first Marvel game. Love playing at Marvel. We get a lot of fans turn out to those games. So um yeah, really looking forward to it. And what's extra special for me is Georgie and Kim are down um on Friday. So cannot wait to have the girls at the game and have them cheering and um, you know, we got an Easter egg hunt on the Saturday at the footy club. So I can't wait to take Georgie and no no doubt she'll be as extroverted as anything and um, be pinching eggs off everyone and trying to win everything because she's competitive like her dad and her mum. So, um, yeah, really looking forward to that and looking forward to the game. Hey, just before we move on, does the, does the loss last time to them, does it stick in your mind? Like out there, do you reckon you'll be thinking, is it more motivation or is it more shit last time these guys got us so we need to be on our game? Good little reminder. Yeah, well, yeah, well it's just, yeah, that's it. It's a good little reminder. We know there's no... 
mate, you give any team a, a sniff, they're going to like they'll take it and run. And they did that last year. And we yeah. know if we do that this week, they'll do it again. And as I said, they've played some really, really good footy. Their midfield is really impressive. Tim Kelly, Elliot Yo, I think's back to um, he's powerful best. He showed great signs last week. They've got obviously Harley Reid, which will be exciting to play against. Um, obviously, he's um, you know highly rated and highly touted, and has and has had a really good start. So, um, yeah, it's definitely something that um, you know, you know, we want to go out there and just play our best footy, and and we know that if we do that, um, hopefully the scoreboard takes care of itself. So, looking forward to it, mate. Cannot wait for the game. Nah, all the best, mate. As always, so I'll be Sunday. I'll be I'll be able to watch that one. So I'll be glued to the screen watching you. Hopefully, dominate like you normally do. Anyway, um, yeah, look That's forward to it, mate. Thanks, mate. Uh, moving on, moving on. Let's talk about just before we go into our favorite segment of the week. I want to talk about the F one. You missed it, Carlos Sainz come from uh, Ferrari and, and and took it out. Big Maxi had the uh, brake failure. I was going to say so. Does that uh, – well, firstly, you would have been really jealous because I know you love your your F1 and whenever – well, you've probably gone to the last, what, five or six Albert Park yeah, probably. F1s, have you? Have you? Yeah, I reckon I would have been the last – oh, maybe four. I didn't go last year either because I was – oh, no, I did go no, last you, year. You did. Yeah, I did. You did because you and I, I played did. against each other and then you stayed at my house and you went to the thing. That's right. I did go. Yeah, well, there you go. Probably four or five years. Um, so it was a bit flat, but I, I had the opportunity to come down, but I didn't come because of obviously we're playing Thursday night. So it's a quick turnaround from, you know, Sunday to, and we just come back from Perth. So it was a bit of a, it was a bit too much in the end. So I just made the smart decision and stayed up here and had a low key weekend, like I said earlier. So it was nice to, uh, see someone else win though. I feel like Red Bull. Oh yeah. I remember seeing. They're so dominant, and then to to have someone else win, so Carlos, and I think he was a bit crook too, leading up to it. So he was he was lucky to get out, and he was actually nearly going to be my bloom of the week. But I've got another one. It's always really cool. You don't realize how big the F one is until it's here in Australia, and you see the amount of fans that are, you know, out and about. And even when I was driving home, I went out, um, went out for dinner. So I drove back from Ballarat after the game, went out for dinner in St. Kilda, and there's so many um, F1 fans walking around. Clearly the event's done, but you see them all you know, on the beers, still at the pub or whatever, and they're all out for dinner. They've got their Ferrari hats and McLaren jackets and all this stuff. It's really cool. Um, it's really cool because that's on my drive home as well, going past Albert Park. And yeah, it's actually, you can hear the noise. Like I remember when I left my house on the Saturday um, in the aft, in the Arvo, I could actually hear, and I'm obviously in, you know, how, far, how many k's away am I from Elwood Park? I don't know how many that is, but I'm about twenty k's away, and you could actually hear it from there, which is actually really cool. Didn't our um, our Aussie boy, uh, what's his Piastri? How do you say Oscar Piastri? Came fourth, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He did. Mm, it's good. Uh, that's good. I um, I still need to watch the drive to survive. I mean, that'll probably get me into it a little bit, but um. But uh, I actually did want to touch on, before our blooms of the week, uh, a little bit on the netball. There was, um, you know, we haven't talked about a netball at all, I don't think. And uh, the season's not too far away. We had our girls go up and play in the, um, what's it called? Is it equivalent to like the NAB Cup kind of, the old school NAB Cup in a way? <laughs> yeah, I think it's called Team Girls Cup. Or there like go. the, yeah, that one, Team Girls Cup. Yeah, so we our girls went up there and obviously played over in, in Sydney, which was um it was cool to watch a bit of netball being back and you and I had a chat on the phone and us being the pros and the experts that we are, we were dissecting the team and talking about the uh the opportunities going forward. Feel like we're uh, you know, I feel like we can be quite achievers to the point where we can hopefully contend come to the pointy end of the season. I agree, yeah, and we talked about this today, but I feel, you know, sometimes when the expectation's not there, you can just fly under the radar and knock a few teams off here and there, some of the favourites or whatever it might be. And, yeah, come the pointy end, like you said, just time it really well. And then I feel like that's what Adelaide did last year, to be honest. Like That's, that's how did. they won in the end. They, they were playing their best netball right at the end of the season and they knocked off, you know, arguably the better teams throughout the season. So I feel like the, our girls are... Hopefully a little sniff. Can't wait. Can't wait for a for our weekly netball chat. I cannot wait. Um so we may as well move into the bloom of the week. You've said you've got yours first. Yep. I've uh I've got one this week. So 
a couple of our boys, and I've gone to footy again, but it's something that I thought I should give a bit of a shout out. So Jimmy Madden and Dara Joyce, a couple of our um, Irish lads from the club, shaved their heads yesterday for the world's greatest shave. And I just wanted to give them a bit of a, a shout out and pump up for doing that. And obviously we all know the world's greatest shave and the charity and the organization that that is. So such a um, a great gesture by those two lads. And yeah, just wanted to give them a bit of a shout out, like I said. Very nice of you, mate. That is, um, yeah, that's, I love when, when we have, we've had players in our team do that as well. Um, which is really cool. There's a lot of guys that obviously love their hair and um, the fact that they can do that is awesome. I love it, mate. Well done. Uh, my my uh, Brooks Bloom of the Week, I've um, gone down the uh, the horse racing pathway. I, um, you know, the beauty of playing on Sundays is you could actually watch the Saturday races and we're, we're smack bang <laughs> in the middle of, in the middle of the autumn carnival and there's been some ripping, uh, Group one races, but I want to shout out this uh, beautiful horse. Her name is Imperatriz. I know you know who Imperatriz is. Um, she's been thrown in a couple of my multis and uh, she's really helped me win. So thank you, Imperatriz. But <laughs> she, she just raced on the weekend in what was the stakes? It was called the William Reed Stakes, which is another group one. And she won her 10th group one just on the weekend, which is which is incredible. I mean, it's incredible for horses to do that, to win one group one, let alone 10. So praying praying to God that uh, when our boy Lordship uh, starts running soon, which is obviously mine and your horse that we have a loose share in, that he can win some he wins some big races for us. But um, yeah, my Brooks Bloom of the Week is Imperatries. I like it. And while we're talking about horses, one of our – not we, didn't, we weren't part owners in it, but a horse that we really loved actually is a bit crook at the moment, Gold Trip. So we want to yes. send our yes. thoughts to to Goldie because yes. he's he's been a great horse of ours um, over the journey, and we've always checked in on him. I know a couple of the owners that I always keep in touch with, but um, yeah, it's just a obviously sad time for for Goldie, and hopefully, you know, all things are going okay. Me too. I um I love a little horse chats. All right, well there you have it, guys. There's our Brooks Bloom of the week. Um, let us know your thoughts as always. We love. Uh, having a bit of a, a laugh about it. But um, in all seriousness, it's uh, thanks to Brooke and the team for uh, looking after us and supporting us through our journey of the podcast world. So, um, yeah, Hadzi, anything else you want to talk about before we finish things up? Yeah, well, we haven't we haven't addressed our tipping competition. Not that uh, – oh, yeah. I, I think we forgot to do our tips last week. I think we did, yeah. But let's go through it. We might as well before we go. I think I'll just say I'm in front because I was in front. Um, we'll just brush over him. Brisbane Collingwood, I think Brisbane, you think Brisbane. North Melbourne, Carlton. 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 Fremantle versus Adelaide. The Dockers, I think, are in good form and played against them a couple of weeks ago, so I feel like they are. Luke Jackson, very – oh, he's going really well at the moment. He's probably mm. been a bit underrated for my liking. Yes, I agree. Could be a bit of love next week for him on now our, our new little uh, segment. Uh, Essendon St. Kilda. Uh, the Saints for me at Marvel. Mm, I think St. Kilda too. Port Adelaide, Melbourne. Oh, good game. Oh, the D's always play well over there. Um, I'm going to say Port home game, mm. Adelaide Oval. I'll go – I'm going to say Port as well. Bulldogs, Eagles, Bulldogs for me, obviously. Might go the Eagles this one. No, nah, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. You're not joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm tipping the doggies. Richmond, Sydney. Do you still know how to sing the Western Bulldogs theme song or have you forgotten it? Yeah. I actually saw the clip on Instagram of you singing the song. I want you, you know, you know how you're talking about a bit more gusto on the podcast. Well, I want you to sing the song with a bit more gusto because I saw the clip of you and all I was watching was you and you were just, sons of <laughs> the West. Come on, give Wait, us what, a bit. What angle, how do you, sons of the West. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the most I'm going to give it. Um, Richmond, Sydney, in Melbourne. Swans. Yeah, Swans at the G. I feel like they played there a couple of weeks ago against the Pies and played really well. So they'll continue their winning streak. Uh, okay, I'm going to go Richmond in that one. Oh, just going to go against you. 
Um, that's the only reason why I'm doing it. And Hawthorne versus Geelong, the MCG for the Easter Monday game. Uh, I think the Catters will be too good there. I am going to go Hawthorne. So there's two <laughs> that I'm going against up. And I actually think Hawthorne will win that game. I think they play the uh, Easter Monday games good and they play a good brand of footy. So uh, I'm going to go them. Hey, actually, I wanted to remember last week um, that lovely lady, that fan of ours who very rudely, we forgot her name and we actually didn't say her name. Her name is Carla. Yes. Better love to Carla. She's, she's the lady that lives over in uh, WA who um, when we go over there, she had obviously – what she have for you? Was it an ads and dunks? T-shirt or something? It was a it was a T-shirt, a white T-shirt with you and me on the front. Mm. And, um, yeah, and I spotted it in the crowd at our captain's run. So I just wanted to make sure that we uh, gave her some love and we're actually sending her some, over some of our signed ads and dunks gear. So we look forward to seeing some photos of her in that. Or next time we're over in Perth, we'll see her in it. That we are. So, Carla, sorry we uh, didn't uh, – we were calling you, you know, she, and, and we're very rude of us. So thank you. Thank you so much for the support that you give us. You've been one of our loyal fans from the very get-go. So that's all for me, mate. That's all I wanted to um, – nothing else really from my end. Nah, I like it, mate. And don't forget, as we said off the top, the uh, the giveaway for this week's game, my game, uh, the Lions first surprise on Thursday night. So all you got to do, simply share the pod on Instagram, tag us in before midnight. So that's me, ads. Oz American Aces and Brooks Blooms before midnight Wednesday night, and the winner will be announced 11 a.m. Thursday. So we look forward to hopefully reaching out on Thursday, the day of the game, and we'll get you there on Thursday night. And it's brought to you by Brooks Blooms, and it's in the new veranda the new veranda area that Brooke has set up. So very amazing spot. Got to witness it. So look forward to announcing that. But thanks again, Adzi. Thanks for the another great potty mate it's been a, a ripping one and we look forward to next week already thank you mate loved it loved every minute as always can't wait for next week and good luck good luck go the, yes, go go the lions go the doggies <laughs>